Oh, dear. Here we go. Episode four of Oh, Dear. Welcome back. And Oh, Dear, presented by Bose Bar and Stage. Pretty exciting. First time we get to say that. Thank you again for tuning in. I'm Ted Emmett, joined, uh, as always, by three, uh, I don't want to say esteemed colleagues, but I'm joined by three people. And of course, they say he has a heart of gold. I think it's mostly butter and other forms of cholesterol. Dustin Moore, how are you doing? What's going on, boys? I'm good. Uh, yeah, life's good. NHL's back. NFL playoffs are on and and uh, spending lots of time with the wife and daughter. So excited for episode four. Here we go. And uh, as he so eloquently put it last time, he's my partner in nostalgia. He's also the only person I know who buys his clothes at Build-A-Bear. Kevin Walsh, how's it going? <laughs> Yeah, you got me. I uh, I buy my clothes there when my kids are there building their own bears. So it's uh, usually you get a discount when you do it that way. So it's perfect. Yeah. No, I'm good though. Thanks for asking. <laughs> and as we found out, not that it's hard, but the man with the sexiest voice on this podcast, and I know Ryan Lund, you know, I'm going to ask you how you're doing, not because I care, but it'll hurt your feelings if I don't. So how's it going? Uh, yeah, I'm doing. I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for asking. It feels uh, it feels pretty weird having a presenting sponsor for this for this podcast. So I'm going to be honest. Like we're just we're literally recording in a basement right now, and it kind of legitimizes us. I think so. That's that's. I'm I'm feeling good, Ted. Feeling great. And a huge thank you to Bose Bar and Stage. You know, everyone there, incredible people. They've always treated us well, you know, between the four of us. A lot of the things we do, a lot of the events we've done and fundraisers we do at Bose, they give us prizes. And now now to come on and do this, especially only after three episodes, I will say the support from around the community has been incredible too. So thank you to Bose. We probably won't let you down, but we, re- we really appreciate the support. And I know we can do uh, lots of good things working with them moving forward. And on that note too, um, as part of them being the presenting sponsor. We're going to talk with Dustin Harper, the assistant general manager at Bose. We're going to talk to him a little bit later. But first, we're going to start things off right as we always do with the Glad game, a little more open version of the Glad game this time. Uh, In this episode, we want to talk about, uh, again, great community sponsors and supporters. The Glad game is brought to you by another new sponsor of ours, Louis Corvo of Warren Sinclair LLP, a central Alberta law firm dedicated to helping all its clients achieve their business and personal goals. Learn more at warrensinclair.com. So let's just start again. A, a great guy there in Louie, a huge supporter of the community. I, I count him as part of our East Coast fan base that, that we have growing a little bit because he is is from the East Coast. But again, big supporter of all things local. So thank you, Louie. And we'll let someone else uh, officially kick off the Glad Game. My Glad Game goes out to the support from our friends and and local businesses and sponsors that have have uh, given us some money to to buy equipment and and really further this podcast and and make it into something good hopefully and and uh, obviously our friends and and Louie fits into to as one of those and same with Brennan at Bose and and some of the other sponsors like Andrew Russell and and those those other businesses that have stepped up so my glad game was easy this week makes me happy makes me excited to come on here and record more episodes so cheers to them that was pretty good. I'll I'll try and follow that up. Uh, I was doing some homework and trying to think of something nice to say to you guys, and then I just came across a really cool story instead. So I'll uh, I'll use that as, as something I'm uh, that made me glad. I uh, read this article um, about this this grade nine kid from Pinoca or Pinoca County. His name's Lucas Berg, and he he got some money for Christmas, and he decided to donate twenty full backpacks of of supplies to the mustard seed in town. So I know when. When I was in grade nine, I think you're 14, 15 years old. And I know I probably asked for like hockey sticks or video games or, or other stuff for Christmas. So I, I know I wouldn't have done that when I was in grade nine. So huge shout out to to Lucas and and people that have the ability ability to give and that gave over the holidays. So that uh, kind of just uh, warmed my heart when I read that story. Lundy, when you were in grade nine, weren't you asking your parents for a Playboy subscription? <laughs> <laughs> No, that no, that was until grade eleven, Kevin. <laughs> yeah, grade grade nine was just Maxim. Yeah, and and National Geographic. <laughs> that's that's my sentiments exactly to that story, Walsh. Yeah, something nice. Okay, nudity. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. All right. Follow that one up, Kevin. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm glad for hockey to be back. Uh it's a little stereotypical and and maybe lame, but as you guys know over the last however many months it's been, there's you're at home all the time, not much to do at night, you're watching TV. Uh nice to just to to see my favorite sport back on television and even though obviously I'm a diehard Oilers fan, 
and they're not off to such a great start. It's still great just to watch some good hockey. Hey, maybe by the time this this goes, it'll you know they'll they'll string a couple wins in a row, and you never know. Yeah, I'll be happy if they can two in a row. That'd be awesome. Or even just score on the power play. I, I'd even take that. So mine is is pretty similar. It kind of goes along with Lunds. It's a, something actually that happened around Christmas time, and didn't find out about it till a bit later. But I still think it's worth bringing up. And it goes with Dustin's too, and all the community support we've received. And a lot of people have been messaging us on social media too, and interacting. It's been an opportunity to. I guess virtually meet some people that I I don't know in the community. And one Wesley Langwa, uh, who owns Mom's Diner in West Park, just messaged us to say that he he really enjoyed the podcast and and that and you know loves the community support and loves Red Deer. And I, I, through that, I found out Mom's Diner at Christmas time gave away two hundred free meals on Christmas Day to people in the community. And I think that's pretty amazing. So when I said to him, I just said, "Hey, by the way, saw what you did there. It's amazing." And his response just was that, "Yeah, it was a no brainer. We love Red Deer." If that perks up the community uh, just a little bit, we're happy to do it. So, you know, my glad game is just people like Wesley um, and getting to know all those people in the community. But there's so, so many of them. And again, you know, I know Wesley's just one of many, but I think to hear that is pretty cool. And again, always lifts your spirits and people giving back businesses, supporting businesses when really they need the support probably themselves. So, so great job to Mom's Diner on that one. Number one, congrats, Ted, on your new friends. I think you're up to 10 or 15 now. <laughs> Number two, if I could maybe add a little bit to the Glad game, this podcast has been pretty cool for myself. It's exposed us to so many more businesses and people that we didn't know existed and the, and the things we didn't know were going on in the community, like Mom's Diner. And, you know, you only hear about the ones maybe that are public or in the newspaper already news now and stuff like that. So that's been one cool part with this podcast to expose us to those people who, who really are making a difference in our community that you don't often hear about. And you want to talk about people making a difference right now. It rolls perfectly uh, into our interview with Dustin Harper from Bose. We all got to, to sit down on Zoom yesterday with Dustin. Again, uh, you know, Brendan is is the guy on the ground at Bose, or he's basically the, the face of Bose. But Dustin's right there with him too. Another guy who will do anything for us or anyone really. A great guy. It's always great seeing him in Bose. And now he's got this great initiative going on that... By the time this airs, it'll be pretty close to, to the end date for it, but it's still worth mentioning Be The Village. So with that, let's roll into the interview. All right, here we go. Our first shot at, well, four of us interviewing one person. And we've got a great guest here and very fitting, seeing as uh, we've just announced Bose as a presenting sponsor. Anytime you've been to Bose, you've seen him. He's the man with the beard behind the bar, but he really is so much more than that. A big part of Bose, he's the assistant general manager, and I think pretty much everything else in between. It's Dustin Harper. Thanks a lot for joining all of us. Thanks for having me, boys. This is uh, this is going to be fun. So first off, we'll just start with the, the easy question. Hopefully, maybe it's it's been a while, so you can't even remember. But how long have you been at Bows, and and really, how long have you oh. lived in Red Deer? Well, I lived in Red Deer probably sixteen years now, and uh, been at Bows for six of them. I don't even remember, but yeah, six or seven years. And now you've you've obviously seen a lot in those years behind the bar, but obviously in 2020, probably not like anything you've ever seen before. And Bose has really been one of the leaders, uh, you know, around the community of adapting and changing to this environment. Uh, so what has that been like for you guys? Because obviously you've made a lot of changes and and really done everything you can to keep going during this whole pandemic. Yeah, it's been it's been a, a lot of changes this year, but it's it's easy knowing that uh, everyone's in kind of the same boat too. It's hard to get up and down in it all, but um, we've had to adjust adjust quite a bit our approach to what we got to do here to make some revenue and to keep the doors open. But Brennan's been amazing in leading us through this uh, past year for sure. Justin, maybe 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 touch on uh, a couple of the, the initiatives that you guys are or new things that you guys have come out with uh, in regards to menu and takeout. Yeah, so we had to shift pretty much everything to takeout, right? So we we got some subscription boxes where we tour around different parts of the world every month. Those are those have been a pretty big hit. Uh, they come with a cocktail or without. Um, we did some Christmas boxes. We did uh, some New Year's boxes. We sold out of the Christmas boxes, so that was huge. Um, and now we have an initiative we've partnered with the Mustard Seed on called Be the Village, and that one uh, that one's taken off really really well for for the mustard seed for sure. And be the village is a big one. We'll, we'll talk about uh, a bit 
as we go on here too. What about community support? Because I know, um, you know, I've been in a couple of times and you've been the guy on the front lines too, handing out all the takeout, but I know support local has never been bigger than it's been in the, in the last year. And I know just even as in, from an outsider's perspective, I, I know and can see that you guys really have uh, still all your loyal customers have really stepped up when they can and where they can. Uh, I mean, we're really lucky in the response we've got from the community. We try to be really active in the community as well. So, I mean, when it comes around when we need some help, it's been, honestly, it's so heartwarming and so amazing that people continue to order when they can and continue to uh, support even when we bring these initiatives around as well. Yeah, uh, Dustin, do you, do you personally have like a, a favorite meal that, that you could order for, for takeout for, let's say, a dinner for two, dinner for four right now? Fried chicken all day. <laughs> Fried chicken is so good here. And we added a spicy option to it. So it's essentially our Nashville seasoning and it's out of this world. So fried chickens and the veal meatballs. But with the gout, you don't want to eat too much of the veal meatballs. I'm a, I'm a big fan of fried chicken too, Dustin. So I think I've got my my weekend meal planned out already. Sick. Well, I'll be here, so I'll see you. <laughs> and what about the the TV dinners for one as well? I know that caught my eye. Being a, a guy, you know, living living in solitude in a basement. Uh, what about those? Those those have to be pretty popular. I know they caught my eye. I'm pretty sure Brennan had you in mind when he came up with that one, actually. <laughs> but um, it's yeah, for 17 bucks, you get a full meal. And then a beer as well. So it's the perfect, like on your way home from work, scoop and grab and go. So are those are those meals that you just heat up when you when you bring them home or do you have to fully? Not the TV dinners. Those are hot, ready to go. But we do have the heat at home options as well. So we got for families of four or two. Teddy, you and I could probably crush one of those twos ourselves. But Yeah, I won't even need you. <laughs> no, no. I do one to myself. <laughs> so I mean... I guess I, I asked you about the food, Dustin. What about uh, what's your favorite craft beer right now? If I get some fried chicken this this weekend, what should I uh, get to drink with it? Well, personally, I don't drink, so I don't know what what I would recommend for you. But to go with fried chicken, you'd probably go with our. We have like one palette left of the citrus sour collab we did with Sawback. I would suggest that for sure. If I were to pick up the food, could I just, am I able to go inside and, and just pick out a, a number of beers that, that I could take home with me too? Or how would, yeah. would I have to order that yeah, with my so food too? It's available to order with your food, but uh, if you wanted to, like when you come in and go, oh shoot, I realized we could take some payments here in house as well. Okay. Just we're not accepting cash at the moment, obviously, but if you got your debit card on you, we got you. And on that note too, just you know, to order takeout, you can go, I know, on Bo's social media and follow the link on all those, right? And order online or just go yeah, to bosbar.com. Bosbar.com and it's super easy. You just set up an account, pick your time, pay online. We limit our contact that way. And uh, we'll see you at your pickup time. So Dustin, uh, when I think of Bose, I think of live music and concerts. What's your favorite concert that you've seen over the years? Oh man, tough spot, but seen so many my favorite probably would be plants and animals when they came reason being well a big reason of it my little brother surprised me from saskatoon he came and just showed up when the show started so that's probably my favorite but i mean when the dead south come through those guys are amazing black pistol fire it was pretty cool seeing maestro fresh west on the stage here too though and Fred Penner. Fred Penner was, I almost cried when he hugged me at the end of it. It was so surreal. <laughs> that was that was pretty incredible. So I would agree because I've seen Fred Penner a couple of times. I saw him at Sate on my birthday. And like I think for people who've never seen him, like it is a kid's show, but for adults. Like it's oh, 18 yeah. plus, right? But you come in and you, you know, for us, we sat on the floor and he plays all his kids' music but it's still 18 plus. So it's a pretty cool experience. And yeah, I got, I'm with you on that one. But I thought you'd say the Spice Girls show though. Well, that was, that was amazing for not so much the artist, but the crowd that came with it was pretty, pretty amazing. There was like five guys in here and 340 girls or something like that. It was nuts. <laughs> we, yeah, me, me and Teddy were one of the guys. For the first show. The second show, w when they came back, there was a lot more guys. They realized their mistake, but <laughs> the, the very first one when they came, that was amazing. Amazing. I'd go. I'd go see him again. I was. I was pretty entertained. I just had a good time. I think that's, you know, a little little bit outside the norm for Bose, but also at the same time, just goes to show how how big they are in the music scene and really trying to appeal to everyone. For sure. 
when you guys open back up, are you gonna are you gonna be able to to book shows pretty easily? I think like it, it seems like you guys are, are the main venue here in town right now. I'm sure Brennan's already putting holds on some things and stuff like that for when we can. But whatever the show is that it's going to be that first one back where it doesn't have to be seated, that's going to be an absolute rager, and I can't wait for that. That's going to be a it's going to be a blast wherever it is. Yeah, hopefully it happens sooner than later. Yeah. It won't even have to be good either. It could be it could be the four of us w- with our new boy band, right? And people will come cuz they'll just be so excited for live music. Oh, they'll for sure come. It's a matter of how long will they stay though, but <laughs> oh, we'll make you money. It's it's free to get in, but 50 bucks to leave and then Bozel, you'll be rolling in the dough. That's smart actually. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I like that. I like that business model. I don't know. Morzy plays a mean triangle. <laughs> <laughs> so Dustin, you speaking of ragers, like you, you wear a lot of hats at Bose. You, you know, we see you bartending, we see you cruising around, we see you delivering food. Like what's the craziest story uh, maybe you can share from Bose? Oh man, six, seven years of it. There's, there's a lot, buddy. There's, there's a couple, including you. There's... <laughs> Um, I don't know. That's, that's tough right off the top of my head to think of one. Let's start with Morsey's story. Tell us, tell us that one. Uh, well, Morsey and Frank on Brennan Frank on were, uh, what was it? It was a hockey Alberta fundraiser night. I'm pretty sure. And those nights you guys bring such a drinking crowd. And so <laughs> there isn't enough time to be everywhere on nights like that. So, I mean, I was running around pretty crazy and then all of a sudden the whole room stopped and there was a huge kaboom and there, it was towards the end of the night. So there was just the stragglers and like the messy ones, like, <laughs> <laughs> so I look over and Dustin kind of hopped up right away. It's saying, sorry, sorry, sorry. Frank on just stayed there laying there still talking, still holding his drink. And yeah, so it said they took out the riser full of all of Ryan's sound equipment. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was a big mess, but I mean, Dustin was pretty, he felt bad. I could tell he felt bad. Frankie didn't give a shit. So <laughs> that, was, that was points for Dustin on that one. But yeah, so had to clean that up. It was, he tried to clean up while we were cleaning up and it was, nah, it was, it was pretty funny though. But I know he was more embarrassed than I was mad. That's for sure. Yeah. And I, I got to watch that whole thing happen. And it's funny that you mentioned Frankie and how he just laid their arms crossed, kept telling a story. Cause that still stands out in my mind where if I knock something over and hear a bunch of glass shatter, I'm going to be shitting my pants a bit, but no, Hey, no, like screw bows. You can clean this up while I finish my story. Yeah. I think I cleaned around him as he was laying there for a little bit too. But yeah, it was, it was funny. That must've been a hell of a story he was telling. I don't know. What, what were you? you guys talking about because you're standing and then you both wanted to get comfortable at the same time and <laughs> leaned on that riser oh whatever story it was it was on beer number 10 i think so <laughs> that's how the story goes <laughs> they're arguing about their ice time for the wrestlers yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Say who can lean harder, basically, I think is what they were arguing about. And yeah, I, I don't know. I, I would say at least I wouldn't blame the beers because I think with, with the two of them, they probably would have thought that a, a freestanding wall could support the weight of two full grown men anyways. But yeah I, yeah, I don't know what they're thinking there. I'm just very grateful to have watched the whole thing happen. And you did get to see it. That's funny. All right, Dustin. Dustin, you got me a little in a little bit of trouble on this interview. So I'm getting you in a little bit of trouble. Who's your favorite oh. server? My favorite server <laughs> that I work with now. Uh, yeah. I don't know if I could la- name one I work with now. My favorite server over the years I've worked with. I don't know. You guys would know these people, but you're just trying to get me in shit now. <laughs> I, I don't have a favorite. We have a great team right now. We kind of got the team where we need to be. It's just we need to be able to get some people in here so I could see them. I haven't seen most of them for month month and a half so they're all my favorites right now that's for sure hey uh hey dustin were you were you there around the time that vehicle plowed through the front doors at bose oh yeah yeah, i was there or i wasn't here but i was at home in bed when i got the phone call right and uh it was funny because i was with the with somebody and then i told told her i'm like i have to go the somebody just drove a car through the window (laughs) and it was like six five thirty six in the morning and she's like I could just tell she was trying to think that, or she was thinking I was trying to get out of it, but obviously, 
a truck, a truck did come through the wall. So, uh, I, I got out of the hot water there, but, um, that was an interesting time for sure. That was, that was nuts. And then we had a huge, uh, chicken fundraiser that was like that day or the next day that we had to board up the wall, put up, put up uh, plastic siding. And then we had a full house that night or the next night. It was, it was crazy. Yeah. That's what I, that's what I remember. I remember driving by and thinking, oh man, they're going to be closed for a while to get that repaired. And yeah, within like a, one or two days, you guys were back open, fully open business as normal. Oh yeah. We were <laughs> all of us here shoveling, shoveling glass. And it was, it was a lot of work, but I wish I remembered the construction company now. But they 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 were amazing. Brendan's over there, but he won't come near here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to ever condone this, but now you say like you know you ever need to get out of a bad date or anything, right? Like you used up a pretty good excuse there. I don't think you can use that one twice. But maybe you know I feel like if I was on a date and someone said I got to go, someone drove through the wall. I don't want to use that as much. Actually, as much as that sucked we got some sweet garage doors out of it. So, I mean, that's, that, there's a plus in it for sure. Something we tried to do for a long time. So. so you have an alibi, but then where was everyone else at? I don't want to implicate anyone, but where was everyone else at Bose then? It, Cause it sounds like it worked out pretty good for you guys. <laughs> Brennan could talk us into doing a lot of stuff, but I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> Again, whenever I think about Bose, I always think about your massive craft beer selection and what you have on tap. You know, I'm a big craft beer guy. So I, I Bose is probably my number one place for lunch just for the beer alone, let alone the great food. If you think back to when things are, are normal, how many kegs do you guys go through on an average week? Oh, man. When, when we get a popular one on tap, like one of those one offs it doesn't last the day like well maybe two days two days but we have we have 13 20 we got 24 taps so i mean we got we go through quite a bit of beer here we're we're a good we're a good uh account for the <laughs> some of the breweries around for sure cuz we push we push craft beer that's part of our branding for sure so do you just cringe when someone like Dustin Moore walks up to the bar and asks for his Coors Light yeah. Well, I mean, you can't, once guys get to a certain age too, you can't really expect them to change and Morsey's getting up there. So, I mean, <laughs> I'm developing my palate. <laughs> oh, but sometimes we got these old boys that are, that are at the bar and uh, they would drink nothing but paps, nothing but paps. And they've been coming here since before Brennan even owned it. And now we got them on the hazy blondes from Sawbacks. We switched them off paths. That was one of my prouder moments as a bartender. Getting one of those old boys to switch over was pretty, pretty funny. I'm sure that took a lot of coercing. Every day. Every day <laughs> I'd bother them until they finally tried it. So <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure if they had enough uh, PBRs, you could probably just slip a uh, hazy blonde in there without them even noticing. Oh yeah. No, those those old boys are con- conditioned. I mean, you wouldn't even notice if they had Five or ten, you wouldn't know the difference. <laughs> yeah, uh, we'll get there one day, fellas. Yeah, goals, <laughs> life goals. <laughs> yeah. So when you when you talk about you know the old boys and your regular customers, I kind of want to jump back a bit when we we're talking about all the the servers and staff there because the four of us can agree with everything we do. We get treated so well there, and we're there a lot. And I've even people have come in. Oh, I see you here all the time. What's your name? You know. So how important is that to you guys too? To a you have that continuous clientele, but you've had some people there that have been there for such a long time. So obviously for you guys, that just really adds to the the whole lo- you know eat local, drink local, think local kind of theme with Bose, right? Is it's just retaining all those good people. Yeah, I mean, we don't have very much turnover here, and that's that's a testament to uh, kind of Brennan's Brennan's culture that he drips down. You know, it goes down through us, and um, I mean, it's it's more a family unit. You spend nine hours a day with these people, and like six days a week. I mean, you better all get along, and you better all enjoy what you do, or else, what are you doing it for, right? Yeah, that would be a pretty, <laughs> pretty crappy life if you <laughs> if you hated doing doing that and you're spending all that time with the same people day after day. For sure, and it's not all always nice and <laughs> and rosy and family like any family. You got your your arguments and whatnot too, but I mean, you get past them. We appreciate what the people at Bose put up with from from the different different types of events we have there. Or sometimes the groups of people we're we're there with. Oh, we always love seeing you guys come in too, though. Like there's fun guests and there's, there's you guys. So, I mean, it's good. I love when you guys come in. 
Yeah, I've never had anyone tell me, Matt, I had a good time watching the the video footage of you guys in here the other night, <laughs> which uh, we've heard more than once. So I'm just glad we're allowed back. <laughs> What's the weirdest thing you've seen a drunk person do? Not necessarily gross or, or dirty or anything. Just what's the weirdest thing? Ah, uh, man. And don't say leave the bar with me. No, that, that would be weird, but I've yet to see it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's been so much. Like you see everything over the years from couples in a bathroom stall to one of the weirdest ones. I was up at Fort Mac and I opened the original Joe's up there and... Uh, this guy, or first this girl came running up to me and said, there's a guy peeing on the bar. And I was like, what? And this is, I'm there a week, maybe a week. I moved up from Red Deer to Fort Mac to open this place. And this big burly dude, like greasy looking, he's just standing there swaying. And at his feet, there's a big pool. And so, yeah, he just whipped his thing out and pissed all over the front of the bar. Like this is six o'clock at night too. Like one of our first service nights, I was in my, up to my neck and work and then this. And so I'm trying to lead him out and he wouldn't, wouldn't budge. And then he started to get mad, slipped in his piss, fell in his piss. (laughs) And then he's laying there and I'm, I, I want to pick him up, but I can't pick him up because I don't want to touch his piss. So basically I had to ask him to fight me so that he would follow me out. And then when we got him out, these guys just grabbed him. And then, yeah, he got he got held down until the cops got there. But yeah, dude pissing on the bar and falling in his own piss might be the weirdest <laughs> for sure. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm pretty glad that didn't happen in Red Deer. <laughs> oh, I, it, I'm sure it has, but I hadn't seen it yet. There's still time though, Morsey. You can one up your you can one up your riser takeout. I'm st- I'm sticking with the wall. <laughs> so Dustin, let's talk a bit now about be the village. Uh, obviously, by the time this episode comes out, it's going to be pretty tight up to the deadline, and you're going to be handing out these boxes. But just if you could talk about that initiative with the mustard seed and how it came about, I know you were a pretty big proponent in bringing this whole thing forward, and we can see it catching fire right now across Red Deer. So yeah, let let us know a little bit more about that. Yeah, it's been pretty kind of overwhelming watching the response. But uh, my sister had sent me something from Medicine Hat that uh, restaurants were doing something similar in that sense. And I I always have been a big proponent of the mustard seed here in town and their school lunch program. It's really important to me that uh, that kids aren't going hungry and that's one less worry for them, right? So I came up with the initiative that uh, we would sponsor boxes. And then at the end of the month, we're going to meet up and take them down to the mustard seed and they're going to do all the deliveries on to their... There's 150 families in their school lunch program and we're right around 40 families so far sponsored. So, I mean, it's it's been insane. And now actually just today, one of my friends from uh, Utopia, the hairdressers have got involved now too, and now they're all back to work. So that's going to do some good work in this initiative too. And I think what stands out about this one too, with the boxes from Bose is not only is it is three meals for a family, but it's three like high quality meals, you know, really don't have to cook too. So aside from just putting food on the table, it's just probably that mental side of it too, right? Like even just for a couple meals. It'll take care of three nights for them for sure. And uh, we're going to top them up a little bit more. I also failed to mention that for every two boxes sold, Bose is going to donate one. So that number is going to be reached, I really hope, before the end of the month. But it's looking really good and it's it's been really heartwarming and really cool actually. Dustin, do you guys have a goal for the number of boxes that you're that you're looking to sell? And how close how close are you to that goal right now? So yeah, the Scott from the Mustard Seed told me there's roughly 150 families in uh, their school lunch program. So that's the t- families we're targeting. And we're once the kinsmen come in, I think we're about 30 to 40, somewhere in that in that area so far. But like I said, just today was when the hairdressers got on board. So I'm not sure where we're sitting at right now. Oh, so, okay. So you got still have some work to do, but you still have some time left this month. And and at the end of the month, is it is it something that's going to be that you guys are going to do again? Or is this something that a uh, a number of restaurants in town are, are taking part of? Or is this solely just, just Bose for now? For, for this month, it was us. Uh, I mean, if a restaurant's interested in taking over the initiative next month, I'd be, I'd be game for that too. But the target was January being 
uh, difficult month for most people. But if if it continues and we could continue helping the mustard seed, why not, right? Yeah, I know. I think it, I think that's amazing. That's such a good idea. And, and you're right. So many families out there. Are, it, it is a tough time. It is a tough month. Um, and it, it, to come home to to a really good home cooked meal is something that I think a lot of families would need and appreciate right now. And there's also a children's book in there from EQ Evolutions for uh, Super Miraculous Me. So for the little ones, there's a little bit of entertainment in there for them too. And Dustin, what's the, I guess, the deadline, um, the last day that people can purchase a box or, or donate to this initiative? We'll probably go right till the end of January and then we'll do our deliveries in the first week of February, I would assume. All right. So if you are hearing this and it's still January, you still have time to, to get out and support it. And I know the trend has been, you know, for businesses to go around and support. So I can say right now, between the four of us, we're all throwing in 50 bucks. We're going to buy wow. a box from you guys. And uh, Morsey's going to throw out a challenge too to, to someone else to match that. Yeah. My, my challenge goes to the guy to the left of me, our CFO from our Chubbs golf tournament. Kevin, are we good for another 200? Let's make it 400. Hey, you guys. Uh, all right. I don't, I'm pretty okay coming on this now. <laughs> just... now I told you it would make it worth your while. No, Thanks, I think guys. it's an amazing initiative and Bose does so much for the four of us and the Chubbs and our Piper Creek Optimist Club and everything in between. So it's a pretty big no brainer for us and look for the Chubbs. Uh, we're going to talk about it some more too. And the Chubbs is going to challenge a couple more businesses. So hopefully you can nice. keep this train rolling. Appreciate that, fellas. All right. Well, we won't take up any more of your time. I'm guessing maybe Brennan's looking over your, your shoulder. Or... <laughs> Thanks for having me, fellas. That was a lot of fun, boys. We'll do this again or maybe get Brennan to do this next time. Yeah. Twist it, twist his arm or something. Uh, good, good luck. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> On behalf of all four of us, thank you, Brennan, everyone at Bose for everything you do for us. And now presenting sponsor of this podcast, you know, we're only three episodes deep. You guys hopped on here. You believe in us. We're not going to talk about your guys' judgment of character, but again, we appreciate it. And it's, it's great to talk to you. And I can't wait till we can all do this in person. We're going to have you on again for sure. Sweet boys. We'll do this in the studio next time. Sounds great. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Thank Thanks, you. Dustin. See you guys. A big thank you again to Dustin Harper from Bose for taking the time to do that. And again, just a huge thank you to everyone at Bose for supporting us. Presenting sponsor is uh, pretty huge. And I want to tell one story quickly coming out of that interview because after we did it and I was having a listen and every time Dustin Harper would talk, it almost sounded like he was like shuffling poker chips or something like that, if you, if you know what the sound is. And finally, I realized what it was was the microphone on his earphones was rubbing against his beard every time he talked. So his beard is so amazing that it even it managed to be a part of that whole interview. So it, it stumped me for about a half hour. I could I checked it. I was like, is it me? Is it my headphones? I tried different headphones and then finally realized looking at the video. Oh yeah, it's just rubbing against his beard. So Yeah, that guy that guy did have a <laughs> have a monster beard. Something for us to shoot for, I guess. Uh, I know, I think Ted might be the only one that could possibly grow one like that. The other three of us have blonde or invisible beards for, for most of the time. So maybe, maybe when we're 50 or 60 though. I just love walking into Bose and, and seeing that beard behind the bar and, and knowing that I'm going to have such great service and, and a smile on his face the whole time. It's those two guys, Brennan and Dustin, when I walk into Bose, make, make my day before he'd even get started. And that's, if someone can make your day before, like if you're going in hungry and thirsty and your day's already made, that's a big testament to those guys. So we're all here drinking some Troubled Monk tonight, courtesy of Doortender. Once again, always got to give them a shout out. If you haven't used that code yet, oh dear, uh, download the Doortender app or go on their website, O-H-D-E-E-R, all caps. That's going to get you $5 off your first order from Doortender. And their new store is now open, so you can go visit them at number 11, 3701 50th Ave. Uh, that's right off Gates Ave, kind of by where uh, it's all Greek to me, and she so is. So uh, really great news for them. Uh, happy for all four of those guys. So another great way to support local, you can either order delivery or you can go in there if you want to get out of the house. We've got our second episode now of O Beer as well, and alluded to it already. We're, we're doing some uh, some Troubled Monk drinks, not necessarily beer. So really quick around the circle, what are we drinking this time? I got the Buck Tooth. Uh, it's a Belgian white and it is a delicious. I uh, I gave the hard, the hard iced tea a, a try and it was, it was good. Uh, highly recommend for any of you non-beer drinkers out there. I had the Epitaph Gin and Soda not a big fan of gin for a long time. I thought I'd try it again and it's delicious. 
could easily drink a lot of them in one night. And to keep the non-beer train rolling, I'm doing the uh, adequate vodka soda, lemon lime uh, is the flavor they have. And same thing, it's just, you know, for the non-beer options, if you want to support local, there's three great ones there. And head to our social media or YouTube page and, and check out the full, we won't call it a review because we are not qualified to review, but it's a bit of a spotlight on Troubled Monk, another great local uh, local brewery. So make sure you check that out. And now this is amazing. We've got another new sponsor to announce and a bit of a new segment. This is where we're going to go in and just talk about what we want to talk about. We're just going to shoot the breeze, so to speak. I think I actually, I think I made that up. That's the first time anyone's ever said that. So <laughs> let's trademark it. But Shooting the Breeze is brought to you by Gord Smoke Shop, keeping Alberta smoking and token since 1996. <laughs> Uh, pretty good tagline. I learned you couldn't even write a tagline that good. Did you Did you write that tagline? I did not. Or did that's, they? that's the people at Gord's. Oh, yeah. wow. I like it. Follow them at Gord's Smoke Shop on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and visit them at gordsmokeshop.ca for 24-7 online shopping, offering $15 flat rate shipping and backdoor pickup and delivery in Red Deer. And there's more. Mention the Oh Deer podcast. Next time you go into the store, uh, Gord's is going to give you a free gift. So, uh, you know what? It's probably the lamest name dropping you'll ever do, but it's going to get you a free gift. So do it. Gord Smoke Shop. Everything you need but the weed. So they have two good taglines oh, wow. in there. So Gord's actually, as I went in, found out too that they they want to want to mention. Uh, never never met anyone from there. It's a, another great opportunity to meet some great people in the community. They've actually they've been around since 1996. So they're celebrating their 25th anniversary in in March. They're doing that with a raffle to raise money for Fostering Hope Animal Rescue. So if you want to go in, uh, you can win a, an accessory prize pack valued at $250 there. Tickets are $2 each, three for $5. So a great cause there. And yeah, a lot to say about Gourds. But once again, if we want to jump back to the Glad game was, was pretty cool to meet the crew there. And yeah, a long standing business in the Red Deer community. 25 years is pretty amazing. So I've got a, I've got a question about that, that free gift Gourds is offering if you mention it. Oh dear. Does that apply to co-hosts of, of the show? Well, you know what? There's one way to find out how recognizable you are right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're all right. Well, yeah. I guess if they don't recognize me, then I'll I mean, I'll you have to go in and buy I'll... something. You can't go in and say, I'm Ryan Lund. I would like my free gift, please. Thank you very much. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> I mean, I could try it, I guess. But no, I would I would go in and buy something. I'm not going to be a complete idiot about it. Just the normal amount of idiot. that. Yeah, you're, yeah that's fine. I'd no one in, will ask yeah. you to be anyone you're not. Yeah, I haven't been there for, for quite a while. Uh, so yeah, maybe that's what I'll do this weekend is go check out Gord's. I still remember when Gord's was in Bower Mall. That was a long time ago for us uh, and, and so pretty young. And I just remember back then there was no mainstream cannabis or anything like that. So it was really just a cigar shop. And I just remember walking by when I was a young kid and thinking like one, it smelled amazing because of all the cigars in there. And it just, it was forbidden, right? So it just felt like, it just looked like the coolest store. So um, I can say that when I eventually went in, when I was allowed, it's a cool place. And and I, I love that they've been able to stick around for 25 years. So here's a thought too, because now I think it's been well over two years since cannabis has become legalized in Canada. You know, and, and I do, I remember, again, we don't want to get too in depth to this, but I remember it, it was a pretty big deal and there's a lot of people really against it. And I don't know, I, you, you guys are probably more in tune to the news than me, but has really anything come out since then to, you know, any big events that it, they can trace back to it being legal or anything? Because I can't think of it at all, but there's still kind of like a little bit of a, a weird stigma around cannabis. Are you talking about like events that like negative events since they've since they've legalized it? Yeah, like to be honest, like you know, drinking and driving comparable and stuff, right? Like how many number you know, I haven't seen anything suggesting that it was, I guess, a wrong move on Canada's part. That was that was probably the one thing that I was unsure of uh when they legalized it is how many how many more high drivers there might be out there. But I, I don't know what the numbers are. I have no idea. I just haven't really heard of any significant increase in the news. So to me, I think it's been a fairly successful rollout here in Canada. As far as obviously the the government gets a lot of tax money, I don't think crime or anything has gone up or other other problems have arisen from it. Uh, so I personally was all for the move at the time and I still am. I know it's going to take some time for people to get used to the idea of going into a store and and picking up a joint or picking up a cookie or something. But I think as time goes on, it's going to be just as, just as common as going into the liquor store and grabbing a six pack. So probably going to take a number of years, but I think we'll get there eventually. 
I agree, Ryan. I think it's just so new and it's just been so stigmatized over the years. And I think that Dustin, my, me and your kids, it's just going to be normal that there's there's a cannabis store on the corner and it's just going to be more mainstream. And, and I'm okay with that. I think it provides a lot of tax revenue and it's better that people are buying it from a trusted source. I do find it interesting. And I hope this changes that right now when you think about TV commercials, like if you watch a set of TV commercials, how many are, are beer or alcohol out of the six commercials in the break? Like at least one. Whereas cannabis, they're basically not allowed to even advertise at all. And so from a business perspective, it's very interesting. And, and hopefully that changes uh, because to me, they, they shouldn't be treated any different than alcohol. But again, it's just going to take time for the general public to come around to that idea. I think a big factor is that it's obviously still legal down in the States at the federal level. So I think when they do eventually legalize it down there, I think a lot of those companies are going to be able to advertise with the larger broadcasters. And obviously, maybe they'll be able to sponsor teams or leagues like like Molson sponsors the NHL or Labatt sponsors, sponsors a building or, or whatever. So I think it is going to come. I think it's just going to be a, more than a year before that happens. So here's what I like about shooting the breeze. We don't, I don't have to, we don't have to segue into anything. We can just move from one subject to the next. So with us, we spend a lot of time on the internet. Um, we talked a lot about 2020 on the last episode, but just kind of a fun one I want to know because we've talked about it on our own sometimes. If you could sum up the internet in 2020, because there is so many trends right now, right, is the, the Bernie Sanders, which, you know, some people will say is as already come and gone. And, you know, there's all those memes. There's so many things in 2020 that that came out on the internet that I I think were pretty funny. So uh, whoever wants to go first, sum up the internet in 2020 in one sentence or one trend. Uh, For me, the one thing I'm going to remember about the internet from 2020 is the how it started versus how it's going meme. I just thought it was pretty pretty relatable to any person or any theme. And just I just generally got a kick out of uh, searching it on Twitter and, and finding all the different pictures and uh, gave me some good laughs in a dark year. Did you make a post at all? Did, like, did you do one of those? No, I don't know. I don't know how to put two pictures together in a post. So, Well, hey, I, I know a guy you can hire. Yeah, you're too expensive. Oh, I was going to say if, if he can't do it, I'll do it. But yeah. <laughs> My uh, my internet trend for 2020 is for sure everyone's a doctor. I think everyone got their medical degree in 2020. And uh, I no longer need to go on uh, the mayoclinic.com or, or search Google. I just go on Twitter now to find out if I have appendicitis. So that's been a positive for me. And <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, the it's kind of sad all the fake news and and everything that's out there with the pandemic and and hopefully you know once once we get out of this thing we can uh hopefully move on from all the fake news that's out there and i wish i didn't have to ask you this but i have to ask you this you did not try and inject bleach in your veins did you to try and fight covid no i haven't i haven't done that yet i i've written down a lot of cool things you can do for different ailments but uh <laughs> Bleach isn't one of them that I wrote down. Okay, good. Keep it that way. Uh, for me, for me, as I, I struggled with this because 2020, it felt like it was like four different years in one. Um, so I only kind of remember the last couple months of 2020. And, and what I kind of came up with was the online stars, like the YouTube stars, the a few of the podcasters kind of making their way to the mainstream. Like Joe Rogan signed a $100 million deal with with Spotify. The Paul brothers moved over into into actual boxing matches where they made millions of dollars and actually had quite a, quite a few viewership. And that's carried on into 2021 with him fighting Floyd Mayweather. So it's kind of like in the past, there used to be just your, your A-list celebrities from, from movies and TV. And now it seems like more and more uh, we're getting YouTube YouTube stars and, and TikTok stars and all these other different different avenues where people are becoming famous. So that that for me was kind of the, the one takeaway I had with, with the internet in 2020. Speaking of which, how's that TikTok dance coming along? <laughs> I've, <laughs> I've been sent a couple, couple good starting moves. I've been sent a couple <laughs> couple interesting songs to dance to. But keep in mind, it, this is a New Year's resolution. So I have the entire 2021 20, to figure out my dance. And here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to propose something to you here because we put it on social media, some suggestions for songs and had some 
incredible feedback on that. I think we had 20 different people actually suggest a song. Are you willing to, for your TikTok dance, put those 20 songs in a randomizer and whatever song comes up, that's the song you have to dance to. Fast, slow, like, because there, there's a little bit of everything in there. I, I'll do it as long as you can guarantee it's actually random and you don't rig it to have some some really brutal song come like up. Like the, the Titanic like, song? Because I would do that. No, it, we'll, we'll do it. If we'll it's videotape actually, it. We'll make sure it's legit. Yeah, if it's actually random, I would agree to it. All right. So there's a, a great one. We're January 2022 when we can talk about the internet in 2021. We can talk about this dance. And hey, open call. If there's any dance instructors out there that want to do some <laughs> Zoom instruction with Lund, you know what? I, I think he would benefit from it. And we're going to do, you're going to do this. We might as well do it right. Yeah. And I'm a fast learner. I'm a, I have been to so many family <laughs> dances and just, just killed it too. Just, I'm looking forward to it. I have seen you on a many public stages with your shirt off. So, <laughs> no, I'm going to keep, I think I'm going to keep my shirt on for this dance because it's going to live on the internet. So, yeah, that's, that's a good idea. <laughs> well, I guess we'll, we'll find out what the song is first and then we'll go from there. <laughs> <laughs> to me in 2020, especially when the pandemic started, was everyone airing their dirty laundry on Instagram. And what I mean by that, now, if you see people are talking about doing stripping videos on Instagram, it's it's not what you think. It's like, it's interesting, but it's like 10 times more gross. So this Go Clean Co, which is actually, I think, a, a group out of Calgary, they just exploded in 2020. And all these people, you, I don't know, put a bunch of different cleaning ingredients in your bathtub and throw in like your gear, your sheets, whatever. And it just comes out like it strips all the dirt out of it. And it's amazing. Like they blew up. A lot of people did it. And I don't know about you. I'm really curious as to what Dustin Moore's hockey equipment would look like if we if we threw it in a tub and, and did this Go Clean Co. stripping thing. Well, I can tell you right now that it'd probably be a pretty cool video for them to post on their, their Instagram, even though they're already so big. But my hockey equipment or my hockey bag has not been open since the last time we played hockey, which was, what was that, Kevin Lundy? Like that was what, November? Yeah. Early December. So the bacteria or disgustingness would be, it would be so gross. I'm up for it. I, I think that needs a cleaning and I'm just not sure I'm going to be able to use my own bathtub. I'm not sure my wife's going to let me do that. So well, I might need a bathtub. Yeah. And, and hey, go clean co in case you missed Dustin's really subtle hint. We'd love for you to post the video of it after we do it. I just want to make sure that, that you know that that's what, that's what we're looking for. <laughs> I haven't, I've heard of this company. I've never seen their videos, but do they offer like the product or do they just tell you which, which cleaning supplies to toss in yeah, your bathtub? You, you just go get like a bunch of different cleaning supplies. So you go and buy them. So they give you the instructions and stuff and, and do all these cleaning videos. So here, here's a call out to coworker Aaron. I know you have all the, the stripping stuff and Dustin would really love it if he could use some and ruin a bathtub. Yeah, the, honestly, though, it was a really interesting trend. And it's a lot of people listening will, will agree. Like, it just absolutely blew up. And people were at home with nothing else to do. What uh, what color do you think is going to come off of Dustin's hockey, <laughs> hockey equipment? I don't know. I think it's going to be offensive to the eyes, whatever it is. <laughs> okay, I, I can't wait. Dude, yeah. I want you to do, do this soon. I will. All right. So that, yeah. We kind of summed up the internet in 2020. Like I said, lot, lots of things out there and lots more to come. I think every every week there's a new meme and can't wait to see what's next. So speaking of the internet, because I, I spend way too much time on it and finally got outside today and the weather I was thinking, it's pretty nice for this time of year. And what it really made me think of is, wow, this time of year, normally, you know, we'd be, be heading to Phoenix, Arizona, going to the waste management, you know, Dustin, your annual, annual trip, that tournament would be going on. Really the biggest party tournament in golf. I know a lot of people from around here and all over go down for that. Um, and I know, I think everyone's missing the waste management, but uh, for us, lots of, lots of good stories to come from that. And I know just when we're talking about that, I think Dustin, to get to know you and the type of person you are, and we are a little better, tell us a little bit about, uh, I guess, your annual waste management trips. So... We've been going down five years. Last year was the first year we took off and it's a PGA golf tournament. And if I could relate it to anything, I'd relate it to Happy Gilmore where there's literally beach balls flying around the stands and, and crazy party goers. And, and there's over 200,000 people a day at this tournament. And uh, I guess that's just a little bit of a background on it. And uh, the 16th hole is is the crazy hole where, where fans from all over the world are trying to get to and we, we decided one year that we were going to dress up as Sesame Street and, and we started off with 
four guys, I think, and and it's expanded. I think the last time we went, Ted and Lundy were there, and I think we had uh, eight characters. And the Golf Channel and and all the the other news outlets down there usually have a lot of fun with with us idiots dressing up as as children superstars, I guess you could say, and getting into the beers and on on the 16th hole. But the the craziest part of the whole tournament, and and you guys can attest, is is you you got to get there at you know, four in the morning, we we're waking up and, and taking a limo at 4 a.m. And, and having some drinks on the way to the breakfast club. So, you know, Lundy and Ted, you could probably touch on a couple stories of, of the craziness that uh, that tournament is. Well, I'll tell you one thing, because I only went the one year. And when I first met you just over five years ago now, that was one of the first stories I heard. And I remember thinking every year and seeing you guys, okay, it's awesome. You're on TV dressed as Sesame Street. But I always thought, why the hell would those guys go through it? Because like you said, you're getting up at 4 a.m. You know, you're sitting there, you, you're there for like six hours before you even see a golf shot in the in the hot sun in a costume. Then you go home and, and that's it. But I went with you guys, I did it. And I have to say, honestly, after the fact, I said, okay, why the fuck would anybody do this ever? <laughs> like it was, I think back and, and I know, I think Dustin's still a little trauma, traumatized from that, uh, that one specific year, but yeah, I mean, it was fun, but oh, there's a lot of work that goes into it. So when you, you know, hopefully in years to come, when you turn on and see that golf tournament and you see all the people in costume and that, just know that they, they, they went through hell just to be there. So I, I have a different opinion than, than old Teddy does here. I've, I've gone two years. Um, same thing. I saw Dustin and his group go down the, the years prior. It looked like a blast. I've never been to a PGA Tour event before. And I thought the waste management would be a, a great first one to go to. Um, so the first year I went down, um, I, I got dressed up. I was lent a, a really crappy Ernie costume. And it was like, it was something that you would pay like 20 bucks for, for some large child. And we went down and yeah, sure enough, we woke up 4 a.m. We waited in line from 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. and then sprinted to our seats. And luckily we got there. So we got the good spots. And yeah, you're waiting five or six hours till the first golf shot, but you're still drinking and you're meeting everybody and we're, we're dressed up. So everyone wants to talk to us. So we made a ton of friends, had a thousand pictures taken that day. Uh, I had a blast. So, we, so when we went back the second year I went, same thing. We we dressed up. I upgraded my Ernie costume that year. And <laughs> Dustin, maybe I'll let you take over because you're probably a better storyteller from from this perspective. But we woke up at four, got in limo, waited in line from five to seven. And this year it felt a little bit different, didn't it? Like it felt like there was more people and it felt like everyone was a bit tighter together. Yeah, I was... <laughs> I mean, I don't know how many years we're going to have to wait to go back from this traumatizing experience, but, uh, you know, there was probably 10,000, 12,000 people there for 3,000 seats. I'd say we were in the, you know, the top 500, 1,000 people in in the lineup. And and typically in the lineup, they open the gates at seven, you go through, you scan your ticket, and uh, then you just sprint and you run. Well, this one was a little bit different, about five to seven. um, You felt the push coming from the back. Everyone kind of got tighter. And then as uh, 655 hit, um, they kind of realized, oh, oh shit, this is, this is going to be a little bit of a stampede. And as you start to move forward, you're just kind of keeping your feet and you're in these costumes, these stupid costumes that you can hardly see out of. And uh, Big Bird's like seven feet tall and, and he's literally only five feet tall in real life. So he's, he's got no arms inside his costume. And you're just asking the people in front of you to stay on their feet because you know that if anyone goes down, it's going to be a stampede over top of you. Well, sure enough, right as we're kind of getting into the the stadium or, or the course, you know, a few people go down and and all of a sudden Bert and Ernie and Oscar and everyone else starts falling and, and we're getting trampled. And it felt like about five minutes of us getting trampled on and stepped on. I rolled out of there in the Oscar costume and, and started running to the hole and realized I didn't have any shoes on. My shoes got sucked up in the in the pile and then you realize, holy shit, there was just a trampling and I was just going to run to the hole away from all my friends. And I look back <laughs> and and Bert, Bert and Ernie's heads are rolling around on the ground. So I, I, <laughs> I, pick, I pick up Bert and Ernie's heads and I'm just kind of waiting there and waiting for this, you know, trying to help people up and stuff. And, and all of a sudden, all of us kind of meet in the same area and, and Big Bird... <laughs> he somehow escaped his costume and it's like 50 yards away from the starting point. And, and we all kind of gather together and, and then we're thinking, okay, we better get to the hole and find our spots. And like four of us are missing our shoes and a couple guys are missing sunglasses. And it's like, holy shit, 
they got to figure this out. And we took the year off and it was a traumatizing day and kind of took all the energy out of it for us, but pretty fun. Like, let's go back. This is a, this is a hilarious tournament that you should probably try and get to. And if, if not Saturday, Thursday, Friday, Sunday, it's amazing to get to that 16th hall for sure. Kevin, what do you think from an outsider's perspective? I think watching it on TV, I mean, it, it's just the golf tournament in general is awesome to watch on TV because you can just feel the crowd is a complete shit show. And, and, you know, they're showing shots on hole 12 and you can just hear the screams from hole 16 through the TV. Uh, and then, and, and I always get a kick out of watching you guys. Uh, you guys get a lot of coverage on the golf channel and stuff with your Sesame street costumes. You guys have been wanting me to go every year and, and I don't want to, because I just can't imagine sitting in a costume in plus 35 degree weather for 14 hours. Uh, so, I mean, I give you guys props for doing it, but I also think you guys are idiots. So overall, from an outsider's perspective, it's pretty cool to watch, but um, definitely hearing your stories from from the trampling, I could see how that would shake you to your core. Yeah, and it, like it's an experience, I will say, and obviously sour. And actually, I was one of the two. There's only two of us that escaped the trampling. We were like ahead <laughs> of the people who fell. And I remember our one buddy, Dustin's brother-in-law, just grabs me by the back of the shirt and just like whispers a sweet nothing in my ear. Do not fall. Do not fall. Do not fall. And we make it through just as fences are going through. So we're start running and like, keep in mind, I'm still tipping the scales at like 270, 275 at this point. So I get about halfway to the hole and I'm thinking I'm either going completely the wrong way or something happened because there's no way that none of these guys should have not passed me by now, if not all of them. So finally got to the hole, Called one buddy. He's like, oh yeah, we're in a completely different spot. We're not getting into that spot at 16 because we there, we got trampled. So I'm just thinking like, okay, yeah, the, the, you know, it got crowded and stuff. And then of course you go, we go meet up with them, sit down here. Everyone's like traumatized hearing about it. And I go, oh my God, like we just barely escaped. Like how does the biggest, slowest guy out of the group somehow get out of that? But, and I, I think Lundy, you had it the worst and you may have escaped injury at getting trampled, but then you almost <laughs> lost your... <laughs> You almost yeah. lost your eye to a flying breakfast burrito. Oh my god! So yeah, I went, I went down almost immediately, and then so thank, actually, yeah, thank you for actually coming back, Dustin, because I don't know if you pulled me out or if someone else did, and then you helped me look for my shoes for about ten seconds, and then I think you got yours, and I, I think I just said, ah, oh, screw it, I don't need one, I'm just gonna go try and get a good, good seat. So then we sprinted to the stadium, uh, and I was already like shooken up a bit because I'd just been trampled on for a few minutes and <laughs> was trying to get my bearings figure out like what the hell just happened so we get to the stadium and we get to our seats and and i think we're all just kind of decompressing you're like okay we finally made it the hard part's over we can relax have a beer and when you get there they're they're all the staff are, are throwing bottles of water and breakfast burritos and like usually the staff are, are chucking them not not too hard but some people when they get them they're just firing these burritos like like a bullet so i sit down <laughs> and not two seconds later i decided to take off my ernie head and <laughs> two seconds later this burrito comes flying and fucking nails me right in the eye and it just i, I like i thought i thought it was like a bullet and i th for i couldn't see out of that eye for about five minutes and i'm just thinking holy shit it's not even 7.05 and this day is off to a terrible start. <laughs> I've been trampled on. I, I, I was stepped on 150 times. I've taken a burrito in the face and now I don't know what's coming next. So I was just terrified for the next six hours. But it was, with all that said, I did have a great time. I did have to take last year off because I needed a break. I'd be willing to go back, but maybe we just don't put the costumes on till we get there or maybe we just maybe take a leisurely walk instead but that was one of my most near-death experiences i've ever had and i i still think about it to this day and i, I have to confess i think i've told you this maybe not but th that burrito was actually one that i tried to catch and it glanced off my middle finger and it hurt it bent it back so i <laughs> I miss it and I'm sitting there going, oh, my finger hurts so bad. <laughs> then I turn around and see you clutching your eye. Oh, God. And it is just like bright red. And I'm thinking, oh, I, I better not tell anybody that my finger hurts right now. Man, I so, thought I lost <laughs> my vision, but no, I, it can't. By the time the golfers started coming by, I could see fine and I was, I was recovered. But that was, yeah, what a crazy day. You know, we can laugh about it now and 
it's something we talk about with everyone all the time and a great memory. So I'm sure everyone has, has trips like that, but yeah, that, that was like nothing else. I already knew that trip was going to be like nothing else I'd ever done and it exceeded expectations. Yeah. So when we can travel again, it's, it's a place I'd like to go back to. Yeah. I think we'll bring Walsh too. Yeah. I'm sure we can talk him into it. I think the, you know, trampling's traumatizing and everything, but I think the most traumatizing thing for me that day was, you know, I FaceTime my wife and I, explained the story to her and she goes oh geez that would have been great to see in the news sesame street gang gets killed in trampling <laughs> at the waste management and that's my husband and i was like oh yeah maybe it's time to grow up a little bit. <laughs> but we did we made the local news we're in yeah, that's, before and, that's and i feel true. bad too because we're in the news and guess what i say right before before we go in someone says to me uh one you know one of the it was local news i think you know what's what's your strategy for for getting into, you know, getting into whole 16. I said, head down, elbows up and knock over whoever we have to. And and guess who looked like an idiot on the Arizona news? Because they showed that clip. I think we have it. I'll try and get it up on social media, you know, and they interview Big Bird. But yeah, it's, that was something else. And Lund too. I just keep thinking of all the ways that sucked for you is you, you not only lost your shoes, but you had to throw away one. Yeah. So I did, lo- I did lose my shoes. And then at the end of the day, I went to the lost and found, and they found one shoe, but what the hell am I going to do with one shoe? So I just, I just wore my Bernie shoes for the, for the whole day and the rest of the night, which was whatever. I, I, that was the least of my worries. Believe me. Oh, and I do remember seeing a social media video someone did and it's you because you're in this big Ernie costume running the best you can by yourself with no shoes on like way after everyone's gone by, like the last kid picked in gym class. Oh God. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, waste management, highly recommend. Uh, I'm sure they've got the, I'm sure it's a lot safer now. And if, if not, maybe we'll send this podcast to whoever runs that tournament so they can actually increase their, their safety. Cause there's got it. There's got to be some lawsuits in the future if they don't. So good or bad, obviously a, a pretty strong memory there and a moment in history, at least uh, the three of us and, and the rest of the people involved will never forget. Uh, speaking of history though, Lund, we're going to learn something here. Hopefully it is your turn to throw some red deer history at us. And uh, you did your homework. Good for you. You're keeping a strong wrist today, holding that mic. Like, couldn't be prouder of you. Hit us with some history. All right. Are you guys ready for this? Well, I guess it doesn't matter whether you're ready or not. I'm going to tell you anyway. (laughs) This building turned 90 years old this year. All right. My guess is the original post office, which is located downtown across from the old Hudson's location. It was a post office and then it turned into a Canada Revenue Agency building. So in my opinion, it's cursed. (laughs) (laughs) And I got to go before Dustin because I don't know enough things in Red Deer yet. I'm just going to guess maybe the courthouse because I feel like that's something that'd be have to be around for a long time. Teddy, I I like your guess of the courthouse. I think I got to redeem myself a little bit from the Capri Hotel answer I gave (laughs) last time. So the Lotus Nightclub. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you totally <laughs> redeemed yourself there. Yeah, good redemption. All right. Well, they started construction in 1930 as kind of a make work project, completed it in 1931, and it was not Lotus. It was not the post office. It was the old courthouse. Oh, wow. Which is kind of makes sense as to why they need a new courthouse. <laughs> hey, I knew I knew it. That's why they call me Mr. Red Deer. I yeah. just I know everything and no, I think club I think Lotus was nineteen thirty two, I think oh, they started yeah. construction on. Yeah. yeah. In my defense, I've had the right answer two times. I've just had two terrible answers after I thought <laughs> the right answer. Yeah. No, that uh like I don't I don't know when that old courthouse stopped being a courthouse, but I know there's some private businesses in there now. Um and then that uh, that new court building that's what they're that's what all the construction is downtown right that nine million dollar building i think is going to be done in 2023 and i think it's going to affect red deer skyline so that'll be interesting to see what it looks like when it's done so the capri hotel will no longer be the, the <laughs> tallest building in red deer. It, no in north america north america yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Dust, I can't wait to hear what your answer is going to be next time we do this. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's something I look forward to every every episode. Yeah, you're you're never going to get to give a clue only because we want to hear your answers. And good for you, Lund. Not only like you didn't even have all those facts were in your head. So I mean, you're a bit of a dork, but good for you because I I everything usually I gotta have written down just to make sure I remember it. So. Teddy, I did my I did my homework this time, and yeah. I came I came prepared. 
I had my eye on the prize and I delivered. Yeah. And I know <laughs> even though I got the I, even though I got the right answer, I learned something because I didn't I didn't know the courthouse was that old. So Yeah. If only you applied those principles in your real life, Ryan. Think of where you'd be today. <laughs> So I'm glad you brought up a Red Deer landmark, though. When when we're talking about landmarks last time, Kevin really is. He's Mr. Nostalgia. He's Mr. Relatable. Talked about the Red Deer rocket. And when we posted that on social media, a lot of people in Red Deer loved it. And even I think anyone who's ever been on a dangerous piece of playground equipment could relate. So we are going in to our next edition of Deer Call. <laughs> we will take it. As always, Deer Call brought to you by Andrew Russell and Associates, Central Alberta's number one real estate team, proudly invested in the Central Alberta community. Visit them at andrewrussell.ca. And a big shout out to Andrew too. We talk about businesses helping businesses. He's decided that he's going to pick a local business. I think it's every two weeks or twice a month for all of 2020. And he's going to spotlight them on his social media and really just drive people to go support them. Great initiative. Uh, Again, just another huge, huge uh, guy in the community. And I I think that's awesome of him to do. So we're, of course, piggybacking on that and and helping him share the spotlight. So the very first one is Locker Room Hair Company, uh, which is on Gates Avenue on the north end. I know it's by the Burger King and Arby's. I think that's how I identify everything in Red Deer. <laughs> and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. It's it's right in between a beef and cheddar and a Whopper. That's your happy place. <laughs> that's, that shouldn't have sounded so weird. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but again, head to Andrew Russell Remax on Instagram or Facebook page to learn more. And I think probably more than anyone, I could use a haircut. So there's a way I can support local. Just another cool initiative from from somebody we know in Red Deer. It's it's win 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 for everyone. It's win for the business. It's win for the customer, and it's it's win for Andrew to be more community minded and and invested in our community. So cool initiative by him. Certainly, uh, we'll t- be taking him up on some of the discounts he's providing to to the customers. So great beard, great realtor, great community guy. Can't can't ask for much more there. Uh, so Red Deer landmarks. We we put the deer call out. Got a great response of basically what Red Deer or Central Alberta landmark is no longer around that you miss. Uh, Pretty cool for me to see these because I don't know a lot of them and for you guys, a a lot of nostalgia. Uh, Kelsey B said one of the oldest buildings in Red Deer, Lotus Nightclub, (laughs) Club Low. That's that's not around anymore. Even I have a a couple memories there visiting Red Deer, but I can imagine for you guys, that was uh, quite the hangout right around those those late teen years, early 20s. Yeah, I've been there. I've been there a couple of times. I think everybody that grew up in Red Deer has made an appearance or two at Club Low. It makes you a little sad because, you know, there's there's just not the nightlife that, that we had as, you know, 18, 19, 20 year olds. The, the kids nowadays don't have that any anymore. So I feel a little bad for them. We had, we had a lot of good times downtown Red Deer and hopefully we see a resurrection of downtown sooner and later. Only thing I remember is that's when I first met the Kubi King. <laughs> and your life, no one's life was ever the same after that. No. Now there's just a big black hole in your heart or your stomach or yeah, those things couldn't have been healthy. Both. Yeah. <laughs> so going go on the playground route again, because we talked about the Red Deer Rocket. Mark, Holly, Ashley, and David all said the witch's hat. Again, another thing I had to Google and I don't know how these people are still around to say they even miss playground equipment like this. Uh, where where was that witch's hat? I do I do remember it. It was at Rotary Park and it was insane. Oh, yeah. Like I had to Google it too because I mean, maybe I hit my head enough times on there. I just don't remember it anymore. But that thing was metal and had no inside. It, like it spun so fast. Like Ashley was reminding me how it worked and- and and if you remember Rory Park at all, the park that's that's there now was actually at the bottom of the hill, and they had a huge slide that came from the top of the hill all the way down. So and and that thing was metal too, so it got up to like thirty five degrees in the summertime, <laughs> and like just scorching that that place was not safe. <laughs> I think it made us tougher though. Like it. Well, there's no doubt. Yeah, it gave us some thick skin. Nowadays, like what do they have, they have like rubber rubber bases, and everything's everything's safe there, and uh, yeah, yeah I mean, how dare everyone want children to be safe? What does the world come to? Yeah, well, Ted, I just wanted to point out after I said the Kin Canyon rocket, uh, we got a lot of comments, and one of them was uh, from someone that just recently had moved here, I believe from Venezuela, and they said that that's a common playground apparatus back home is the the rocket. So uh, I know where I'm going when COVID's over. <laughs> <laughs> it was 
Oh, Argentina. That's where it was. So again, you know, I guess they, they know how to party in Argentina and have better playground equipment than we do. So yeah, let's head out there and let's all go play on the rocket. Because I'm sure four, well, three full grown men and Kevin Walsh on a, on that structure would probably be perfectly safe. Yeah, I could easily sit on the top platform. That's fine. <laughs> Both Leah and Trevor said the old downtown theater. So again, just something I'm guessing a little bit of nostalgia there. Now we've just got the one kind of there on Gasoline Alley. Which uh, there was there was two downtown theaters. I bet you it was the Uptown Theater, which is now the Wellick Low clad stage i totally butchered that i apologize <laughs> yeah well eco lad yeah i don't know yeah whatever it is what was the other theater called that was uh well it was uptown was the one that was on ross street and then there's the one over by the co-op right uh but i remember so my my memory of the uptown theater me and one of our friends snuck in to watch american pie 2 when we were underage <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and they had a they had a hallway under in the basement, and you could run through the hallway and come out because there was two theaters, kind of one on each side of the building, and you could yeah. use this underground passageway. So of course we signed in for like Finding Nemo or bought Finding <laughs> Nemo tickets, and then we ran down the hallway and we snuck into American Pie too. And then I think that theater got shut down like a, a year or two later. So uh, definitely my lasting mem- memory of that. And uh, also American Pie 2, one of the best movies ever. So Is that movie that old? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's crazy. Is Finding Nemo that old? <laughs> yeah, it's it's up there, I guess. Wow. Okay, let's not, man, yeah. let's not pull yeah. at this thread. So the next one is... Kelsey W, well, Dustin's sister, and Marissa both said Moonwalkers. And is that like a, a play place type of thing? I don't know. I don't know what that one is either. You have no idea, Ted. This was the place every kid had a birthday party at growing up. And I, I don't know how many years ago they left or if there, anything's replaced it. But there was like a inside jungle gym that you could go in and walk through all the tubes and all these different apparatuses. And it was it was a blast. And then you would have like uh, pizza parties there or, and birthday cake. And I can't remember, did they have laser tag too there? Or, or Yep. They did? Okay. Yep. Yeah. So I probably went to five or 10 birthday parties there when I was growing up. My wife worked there when I, when I asked <laughs> uh, if she had any memories on Moonwalk or she's like, that was my first job. And I was like, what? Really? And she's like, yeah, it was so boring because she said she was on the laser tag side and there wasn't many, many people. Everyone went to the jungle gym and had their birthday parties on that side. But I, I want to say that there's another option now. And Kev, you would probably know with, with your kids being a little older, like Treehouse or something. Is that, is that sound right? Yeah. Treehouse on uh, the north side of town. Great place to go uh, and kill a few hours and let the kids run rampant. I can tell you that Treehouse is way safer than moonwalkers was back in the day (laughs) makes makes sense yeah (laughs) so moving moving outside of red deer a bit now and i know being a kid growing up in calgary i always saw the commercials on tv always wanted to go when i moved out here five years ago finally went right before it closed and was so disappointing because every slide cut up my back is wild rapids water park yes wild wild rapids and sorry that was that was morgan and jody who who mentioned that one I believe I also mentioned that one, Teddy. Yeah, I don't know why you you answer though when like like you, well, you want to shout out on the podcast when you can just jump in and say <laughs> Wild Rapids Water Park. I, I ignored that for a reason. No, but seriously, I did a little research on Wild Rapids. Like, <laughs> do you think that they would allow these slide names anymore? They had a slide named Octopussy. <laughs> well, that was a, that was a James Bond oh, yeah. movie though. Octopussy. Oh, okay. Like, okay. like, don't put the wrong emphasis <laughs> on the wrong syllable. It's a James okay, Bond fa- movie. Fair enough. I don't, I'm not a big James Bond guy, so that makes sense. But my answer is still no. Probably not. Yeah. I remember growing up just being terrified of that Sidewinder ride. And then finally, I got enough balls to go down it. And then, then it became my favorite ride. Up until that point, it was Hell's Gate. Hell's Gate was my favorite. The one where you hop in the tube and then go down and there's like that little waiting pool and then you play like bumper tubes with all the other people there. Yeah, man, I miss that place. But I can tell you though, being one of like going there the last summer that it was open, it, it was it was time. What it, it had was to, definitely time. It had to shut down because of like sa- they couldn't afford the upgrades to make it like safety compliant. I think. But I bet growing up though was probably pretty awesome. Oh my god, we we did a we did a trip there every year every summer with uh, with our family friends, like all fifteen or twenty of us, and it was spend the whole day there. 
the parents would just relax and sit in the hot tub or whatever and the kids would just go crazy down the slides and yeah I got some pretty bad sunburns at that place but <laughs> well worth it well worth it <laughs> yeah that does I've got a light shining on you right now for your camera and I can see you getting a little rosy yeah, so I can, yeah. I can feel it <laughs> So last one here, um, Ryan and Dale both said Sutter Club. Again, something I've heard you guys talk about w- with a lot of passion and something else I missed out on. Just my personal opinion. I just think it was a little ahead of its time. I, I, I just wish right now as adults, we had that, you know, the the place you could go have a beer, play some arcades and, and just have that sport atmosphere. And, and I don't remember everything inside there because it, it is so long ago now, but like that, that was just the place to be for families, kids, everyone involved. Like it was such a cool place. Lundy, Kev, you, you remember anything much about that place? Yeah. When I moved to Red Deer, I think it was only open for a couple more years, but I, all I remember is after any, any minor hockey game or tournament or whatever, that was the place to go for the pizza party uh, and just unwind for both the parents and the kids. Uh, you know, the parents got to sit there and have a drink and relax and, and there was just a lot of different fun stuff for us to do as kids. I totally agree with you, Morzy. I think it was way ahead of its time. Uh, I think it would be huge in in today's world in Red Deer. Yeah, Kev, I, I agree. Um, I yeah, I, I love that place. The uh, I think the reason why I liked it so much is when we went, we were probably what between the ages of ten to fourteen years old or so and it kind of felt like at that time we were going into a bar even though we couldn't drink and we were going with our parents just kind of had that that atmosphere so it kind of felt like a cool grown-up place to be even though you could play video games and you could shoot pool and and hang out with your friends and have pizza parties it kind of felt like you were getting older and 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 having a party at the Sutter Club and obviously the everyone knows the Sutter's in town too so you thought oh man a famous person owns this place this is so cool it's too bad it shut down and I think I think something like that would do great in today's age because like Dustin said before the the nightlife in Red Deer is has kind of dwindled over the last last few years here so that's about it again for another edition of Deer Call sponsored by Andrew Russell and Associates again thank you to everyone who answered got a ton of answers couldn't get to them all so uh, I, I gotta say from the bottom of my heart if we didn't get to you this time just come up with a better answer next time <laughs> <laughs> I like it so now thank God this is almost over We've got to know myself, Dustin, and Walsh throughout the first three episodes. Now it's time to learn a little bit about Lund. I'm going to ask you guys some quick hit questions about Lund. And you know what? Honestly, I don't know the answer. Lund, you might not even know the answer. This time, I want to know if maybe you're going to learn something about yourself today. So this is, what's Lund got to do with it? (laughs) Oh, God. I can't. I can't wait. I can't. Oh, great. So question number one, what was Lund's favorite sport in high school to play? Badminton. You stole mine, but I'll go volleyball. I would I would have gone badminton too. Yeah, 100% badminton. I uh, played at the college level for two years. And we actually, <laughs> uh, my second year at the college at RDC, me and my partner, Amanda, we were pretty good. But we got third place at, at the provincial championship or provincial tournament. And the top two teams got to go to nationals because we were hosting nationals. And the second place to the team, the guy, the guy broke his ankle that year. So we got upgraded. So we actually got to go to nationals. <laughs> did, did Amanda get to go too or just you? No, me and Amanda okay. went. You almost let Amanda down big time. Well, and- we should like, we were way out of our, like we just got murdered. Like we had no business being there. It was pretty cool to watch though. Like these were people that grew up with a badminton racket when they could walk, right? So it was a pretty cool experience. And I'm, I haven't played badminton in, in probably a decade, but it's, it's a sport I still love. And it's something I'd like to get back into um, once we can get out and do things again. Awkward question. This wasn't like a Tanya Harding situation, was it? To make nationals? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, don't, I don't think so. I guess you'll have to talk to Amanda about yeah, that. Your though. lawyer, Louie, would probably advise against you answering that either way. But uh, So question number two. This is hard because it's hard to pick just one. Who is Lund's favorite Spice Girl? Since we were talking about the, the wannabe Spice Girls tribute concert. Posh. I think Ryan still relives his athlete of the year days, so I think it's Sporty Spice. I'm going to have to say Ginger, just because I know, I feel like Lund, like most of us, you probably really like a, a strong, powerful, assertive woman and 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 red hair. Uh, you guys are all wrong. It was Baby Spice. Blonde hair, blue eye. Yeah. How original. Yeah, pretty, yeah, pretty much. I mean, I don't think, yeah, I don't yeah. think you need to explain that one at all. Who, and maybe there's more than one, who is Lund's man crush? Like when we're talking celebrities, everyone has a man crush. 
I have like 30, but everyone has one. Who is Lunds? I'd be, I'd just be interested to know that because I, I would have no idea. This might reveal something about you guys too. Jacob from the Twilight series. I don't even know which one that is. Is it the vampire or the werewolf dude? It's the werewolf. Oh, it's uh, Taylor Lautner. Oh yeah, that guy's doing great things right now. All right, so we've got we've got Taylor Lautner. I'll say Ryan Reynolds, good old Canadian boy. Yeah, I I would maybe think, and just because he's a little relevant right now too, with with his Masters win, is maybe Dustin Johnson. So I've never even seen the Twilight series. So Dustin, that one's that one's wrong. Dustin Johnson is a pretty cool guy, but I just I don't I'm not picking up on his vibe. I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give this one to Walsh. Ryan Reynolds is, is he's 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 the total package. He's got the looks. He's got the the sarcasm. He's a superhero. So yeah, Ryan Reynolds is a good choice. I think. Hey, sold me on him too. Good one, Walsh. How old was Lund when he had his first kiss? Seventeen. Oh, you stole my answer. I'll go 16. Yeah, I was going to say 16 and I thought I was being mean. So, you know, athlete of the year, I'm going to say 14. Uh, I don't know the exact age, but like grade, grade eight was probably my first like makeout session. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kevin always used to give me shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you're kissing her behind the school, man. <laughs> what is Lund's biggest fear? Webbed feet. <laughs> Sorry. You, you said web, webbed feet? Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I have no idea why I said, said webbed feet. It was the first thing that popped in my head as I'm looking at the, <laughs> the Zoom here and I saw Lundy's feet sticking out. So I'm most definitely going to change my answer to something more reasonable. Good idea. I'm going to say uh, small spaces or claustrophobia. Honestly, well, one, I know for a fact that your biggest fear is probably emptying the dishwasher, but... <laughs> We're not we're not we're not going down that road right now. But honestly, I'm just going to take a guess and and go logically and say snakes. Lund, I think your biggest fear is living alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that all the evidence has been pointing towards that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, snakes. Yeah, snakes would be up there. Yeah, either snakes or, or dinosaurs. I used to have a t- I used to have a terrible terrible nightmare as a as a as a child that a T Rex would bite off the roof of my bedroom and then he would chase me all around Deer Park and then he would always kill me at like different spots around Deer Park and I would just wake up in like night sweats. But I do I do enjoy the Jurassic Park movies. Yeah. So at least you weren't on the toilet like that one. Yeah. 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 So yeah. So hold on a second. I'm half right with web toes. (laughs) Oh. oh. Uh, Yeah. Web web toes are fine. Yeah. That's that's if a dinosaur dinosaur is coming at you, you're not going to say, look out for his web toes. (laughs) You're going to get the hell out of there because you don't want to get eaten. I'd be saying, don't step on chillabongs. That's where he caught up to me. As a kid? Yeah. What were you doing in chillabongs? I was was probably running running to go get my dad. (laughs) Dad, there's a dinosaur after me. Well, I'll have some popcorn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I can't get in here, son. <laughs> All right. Well, we know snakes isn't the answer to the next one, but what is Lund's spirit animal? Maybe it's something with webbed feet. I'm going to say alligator because he wants to, to win the job still. That was the first, like, m- closest thing to a logical answer. Gold star. I'm going to say a blue duck because he's never seen one before and he just thinks that it would be really cool. <laughs> yeah. It took me a second there with the blue duck, but I, I got it. It's a, a Billy Madison reference. Uh, not everyone's going to get that, but uh, yeah, no, I liked it. Uh, I would say for Lund, his spirit animal would be a dog, uh, mainly because everyone likes him. He's loyal. He's friendly. Uh, sometimes he has a little accident on the rug and he doesn't mean to, and, and that's okay. Uh, you know what? I like all three of those guesses, but I'm going to go ahead and say uh, a cheetah. I, I used to I used to be fast growing up, so and I think they just look really cool too. So my spirit animal is and will always be. <laughs> well, if your girlfriend's listening, now she knows what type of underwear to buy you for Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> I already knew that, but whatever. (laughs) Yeah, Ted already got me some. (laughs) Uh, Last one. That's a good answer. No one's going to argue. You get to decide what your spirit animal is. What was Lund's last job before he started his career? So basically his last job that had nothing to do with university, you know, post-university and what he's doing now. I can't remember for sure what jobs he had prior to this, but I just always remember Ryan as... uh, he he worked at Enterprise Rent a Car, and so you know we'd be drinking at a pub one night, and Ryan wouldn't be there, and we'd call him and we'd say, "Hey, you'll pick us up, right?" <laughs> Did you? No, he never came once. 
Well, no, I didn't pick them up, but yeah, they they always ask me that, yes. That's a hard question. Me and Lundy became pretty good friends kind of after high school when he was off to university. So uh, this is a stab in the dark. I'm going to say uh, golf club washer at the Red Deer Golf and Country Club. And again, you, you mentioned this the other day. I don't know if it was your last job, but I think you at one point, sounds awful, but you painted lines for the city. So I did, yeah. So I did do that, Ted. I did that like in the summers between university years. I worked for the city of Red Deer with different different jobs for three different, three different summers. My first year after university while I was looking for a job, I did work at Enterprise Rent-A-Car. And then that's when I moved over to my my current employer. Um, and Dustin, I've never been a ball... <laughs> a ball washer attendant <laughs> at the country club or, or any other golf course, but it's still time, man. Yeah. I, I totally forgot about the city jobs, but now all I remember is the one summer your left arm was very dark brown and the rest of you wasn't. And it, be, it was because you, part of your job was driving around the city with your arm out the window. <laughs> Just cruising, making sure, making sure everyone was doing their jobs with the city. No, I had, a, I had a pretty cool job one year at the city. I was in charge of all the trail, Red Deer's trail signs, like all those little signs you see on the trail system. So they gave me my own little truck and I got to drive that the trail system in my little truck and fix and repair the signs, clean off the graffiti, um, set up some new ones, uh, obviously clean clean up the areas if there there was a lot of garbage out there. But yeah, that was pretty boring a lot of the time. But yeah, I got I got to see a lot of Red Deer that, that summer, so... That's yeah, something I I, uh, I miss a lot. Wow, well, we we learned. I think that out of all four of these, I think we learned the most on that one. And they are over. We can all celebrate after this. We don't have to do this anymore. So thank you everyone for for going through that. But no, I think it's I think it's great always to get get to know each other a little bit more and and learn some fun facts. And that moves us on to always my favorite part because we've got uh, we're we're getting a little bit of a heated battle going on here now for Dustin versus Lund. Lund, you, you came back last time and is now two one for Dustin and. And, and just a reminder, what's on the line, the first person to five wins, the other person has to get their, their chest waxed. It's a pretty important battle. And, and we're going to see now if, if Dustin, if you can take that 3-1 lead or, or Lund, if you can tie it up. Are you getting nervous, Dustin? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I guess me neither. So everything's been Red Deer Alberta themed. Walsh and I thought we'd do some things, something a little different this time because... We're all watching a lot of Netflix or streaming shows right now. And the further right you scroll on some categories in Netflix, you can get into a pretty dark place. And there's some not only ridiculous movies out there, but ridiculous movie descriptions. So we picked a couple of our favorites and then we wrote some of our own. And you guys are going to have to decide which one's an actual movie and which one we made up. So we're, we're doing 10 again. Whoever gets the most wins. We've got a tie break around if need be. So this is Netflix or nonsense. I like it. Film number one. Four friends with a long-standing but strained connection take a hiking trip into the Swedish wilderness from which they may never return. Oh, God. <laughs> Netflix. Nonsense. Netflix. Oh, no. The movie is called The Ritual. <laughs> Crap. It's a, yeah, all right, early one nothing lead. Here we go. Film number two. Different versions of the same day unfold. As Jack juggles difficult guests, unbridled chaos, and potential romance at his sister's wedding. God, if you made this up, that's unbelievable. Jesus. Yeah, I know. Nonsense. I, I think it's nonsense. It is Netflix. Oh. If you want to hear some nonsense, it is called Love Wedding Repeat. And not only that, it stars Olivia Munn. Oh, wow. So, and Sam Claffin, Clayfin, which he was in the, the Hunger Games movies. So, a couple big names in that one. And honestly, I, 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 I want to speed this recording up so I can go watch that one. All right, film number three. It's the end of senior year, and stoners Mitch, Greg, Paul, and Beefer are set on leaving their mark on the graduating <laughs> class. And the Idaho <laughs> State Fair is the perfect place to do it. Beefer? Beefer. <laughs> oh, that'd be so, that, <laughs> There's no way you made beefer up. I know that's what I'm thinking. Oh, he could have made beefer up though. Nonsense. Nonsense. You are right. That is nonsense. Oh, thank wow. God. Yeah, the directors wow. are Kevin Walsh and Ted Emmett. Yeah. You made beefer up as I, a name. I, I I know I heard it somewhere else. Actually, I I can tell you right now I heard it on Brooklyn Nine Nine. So I I can't take the credit for that. But I thought let's throw in one. <laughs> but uh, I'd I'd watch it. So number four. <laughs> 
I can't get through any of these without laughing. When a hotshot journalist uncovers a story involving <laughs> involving a billionaire werewolf, <laughs> she unexpectedly falls in love and has to choose between her career or a life with him. Love bites. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Is that Netflix or nonsense? Netflix. Netflix. W- would you guys watch it? Because it is nonsense. That's another uh. Emmett Walsh original. <laughs> what? Uh, uh, did you say a billionaire werewolf? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, shit. You read enough of these, you just find the buzzwords, you find yeah, the formula. Okay, okay. Yeah. Now I know your guys' style, so. No, oh, you know. no, you have no idea what our style is, bud. Yeah. All right, let's see. All right, film number five. Medieval magic sends a 14th century knight to modern day Ohio, where he falls for a high school science teacher who's disillusioned with love. God, there's some big <laughs> words in there. Jesus Christ. Netflix. Netflix. You are right. Uh, it's called The Night Before Christmas, and it stars <laughs> Vanessa Hudgens and Emmanuel oh, wow. Shariki, which is Sloan from Entourage, which I know we're all oh. big fans of. Wow. Yeah, a couple of these have some big names. Oh, wow. Those two's, those two's career took a nose. If, if Sloan's in this movie, I'm going to watch it. That's 3-2 Dustin. So here we go. Number six. When no one wanted to friend super geek Neil on social media, he created a killer app to seek revenge. And this time, there's no unfollow button. <laughs> leave, it, leave it to Ted, the social yeah. media guy, to read this one. Yeah, I'm confused I now. Oh. Sounds like a Netflix movie. It sounds like Netflix. Netflix. That is another nonsense. Oh. Oh. Man, here's another. You might be washing balls at the country club, but Walsh and I are going to be writing movie descriptions for Netflix here pretty soon. Oh, God. <laughs> so still 3-2. All right, number seven. Looking to start anew, a widow retreats with her children to her aunt's goat farm where the ranch manager helps her navigate country life and loss. <laughs> You, it's important that it's a goat farm. This <laughs> is great. Netflix. Netflix. You are correct. Netflix. Yeah, okay, good. If you would have made that one up, I would have lost my shit. It's called The Lost Husband and stars Josh Duhamel, which who I believe was in at least the Transformer movies. <laughs> We're at 4-3 now, so still a, a one-point lead for Dustin. As summer returns to Malibu, Team Flounder takes to the beach to host and unexpectedly compete in the International Beachmaster Competition. <laughs> Flounder. Oh, Ted, you have me so turned around right now. Um, Netflix. Nonsense. That is a 5-3 lead for oh, Dustin. It's Netflix. No. It's a, I think it's a kid's movie. It's called Malibu Rescue, The Next Wave. Oh, crap. You didn't know about the International Beachmaster competition? No, I do, I'm not aware. Yeah, me and Ted are entering the next Beachmaster competition, whatever the hell that is. Yeah, we're going to win. All right, number nine. Newly divorced Susan was convinced she'd never find love again, but her son's swim coach is determined to convince her to dive back in. <laughs> <laughs> oh god uh, nonsense ah crap nonsense that's correct well, well I might as well hear the last one yeah bonus point see if you can at least make it a moral victory here lund yeah number 10 a group of sociopaths who have been killing girls in the woods for sport sets its sights on a teen who turns out to be a trained assassin netflix netflix yeah, I, I'm glad you guys didn't think we made that one up, but it's uh, it's called Final Girl. So it's starring Abigail Breslin, who is like the cute little girl in Little Miss Sunshine, and then Wes Bentley and Alexander Ludwig, who are also in the Hunger Games. So apparently Hunger Games is like the Star Wars of this era, is that when you star in it, <laughs> afterwards. So that is 3-1 dust and a, a big win, and I think that was a big win for me and Walsh, because oh, that was God. the most fun game to run yet. You guys had me completely... Ugh. Yeah, I mean, like, I had no idea. I had, I had some good guesses. That's about it. Those are some crazy, some crazy descriptions. Yeah, the first few threw me off big time because I thought there's no way, there's no way that they made this up. And yeah, sure enough, nonsense. And we have a couple more too that we, we didn't use. So we're, we're probably going to revisit this and hopefully everyone listening maybe got one movie you might want to watch on Netflix. But if you're bored, just read through the descriptions because it is a great time. I feel like this could be a good a good game to play over Zoom with friends right now too. Well, trademark it quick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's it. Dustin, congratulations on, on the big victory. Lund, though, you still 3-1. He still has to win two more times. So don't give up. 
most dangerous lead in chest waxing. And just like that, episode four in the books, I, I don't know if we're, we're getting better at this or it's just going quicker because we think we're better and we're not. I don't know. Either way, we're here. Thank you again, everyone, for tuning in, following along with us. Again, uh, thank you to you three guys, especially right now. It, you know, I think it's it's my my pleasure, and, and it's really awesome to get to do this. So, uh, as always, uh, just a, a chance for your final thoughts here. Great work today, boys. I think we I think we're finding our stride. So let's uh, let's keep it up and and not do anything too stupid. People better like this episode now after we're saying this, or we're in. Well. Okay, well, I'll do another one. Hey, guys, maybe we can do better next time. <laughs> I'll pick you out. There, yeah, now we got two, options. Yeah, you have options, yeah. Yeah, I just want to say thanks to uh, all the listeners and, and all the people that are contributing uh, on social media and just interacting with us because it does provide us a lot of laughs and we are reading everything. So thank you and, and keep it up. And uh, it helps us get through all these uh, all these dark times with COVID. So hopefully we're on the other side of it soon. Yeah, echo, echo Kev's response. And one week closer to golf season, one one week closer to, to baseball season. So giddy up. And I'll just wrap up by saying again, thank you. Thank you to all our sponsors. A huge thank you to Bose one more time and everyone really who supported us so far. Big thank you to Dustin Harper. I know he was a little nervous going in. Uh, that was an awesome interview. He's a great guy. Bose is running a great initiative with Be The Village. Again, you might not be listening to this in time to support that, but again, we, we just want you to know what an amazing initiative it is and get out there. There's lots of ways to support people in need right now, and I know everybody needs it in, in one way or another. So if you can, uh, you know what? Show your support for the community any way you can. And lastly, as always, I'll give a little bit of a plug for our social media. Make sure to follow us, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, interact with us. We love it. Follow us on YouTube as well. We're, we're really, we're inching on Jake Paul territory. I think we have like 36 subscribers now, but uh, you're going to see some stuff on there more and more too, as we go on that you're not going to hear on the podcast. So interact with us on social media. As Kevin said, we, we love it. That's one of our favorite parts of this. So with that, for Dustin Moore, Ryan Lund, and Kevin Walsh, I'm Ted Emmett. And we'll knee a sex time.